we're going on a zoo venture. Come along as we explore some of the coolest animals on the planet. Where they live, what they eat, how they play. Let's go exploring. Do you want to go on a field trip? Yeah! It's when you go somewhere and you learn something you've never learned before. Wow, there's a science center, a zoo. Do something you never thought imaginable. Come on, let's go. And now you can join me on the adventure. We're at the Turtleback Zoo. Come on, let's go. I'm so glad to be alive. I like to learn new things. I like to notice all that I can. I'm so glad that I can know get by myself and grow, grow, grow. I love my friends. I love my mom and dad. Ooh, I'm so glad. So Brent, tell us about these amazing bison here in the zoo. These are one of the largest land animals in North America. They used to roam the, the western United States in herds of thousands. The zoo experience in the winter is very different than the zoo experience in the summer. Animals that we have out year round are animals that can take this kind of climate. So they have that big shaggy coat. Now are they eating these Christmas trees? They'll eat a little bit of it. We give them hay and hay is their staple diet. The trees are something that they um, they play with and they beat up. But um, I was going to say, I mean, it looks like they're actually just playing. I was really surprised at how big they actually were. These are full grown. It's a male and two females. The male's the one on the left hand side, larger animal, bigger hump in the back, larger horns. The two females are in there on the right. Yeah, so I noticed they have this incredible fur. They have large hooves. They have a giant head. And on top of their head are these massive horns. Who are they defending themselves from? What are the predators of the bison in the wild? Wolves. Wolves. How much do they actually weigh, full grown? About 1,000 pounds. A 1,000 pounds. Wow, that's like half a car. Yep. They're a big animal. They're a strong animal, so we're very careful when we work with them. If I saw a bison in the wild, I would not want to get close to it. Not want to get close to it, not want to get out of your car. Yeah, which is another great reason why visiting a zoo is so awesome. Because we get to stand so close and we're safe and protected and we can see this amazing creature up close. So cool. One of my favorite animals at the zoo is the kangaroo. I love watching how they hop to get around. One, two, three, four. All right, my friend. One, two, three, go. Boing, boing, boing. Boing, boing, boing.
These guys are icons. This is when you think about a wild North American animal, this is what you think. And these guys just love this weather. They run, they play. When we were walking up to this exhibit, I noticed they came running towards us. And the first thing I noticed was their eyes, their yellow eyes just staring right at us. Tell me about those eyes. And I think that's one of the things that, that people think of when they think of wolves. It's a haunting, piercing stare when yeah. they look at you. It's intimidating, it's scary, it's exciting, it's visual. Um, they, they watch the people as much as we watch them. And that's what it seems like. And on a day like this, when there's not a lot of visitors here, we're, we're a unique thing for them. So they'll come out and look at us. Yeah. On a busy summer day, they'll be asleep in the shade. Well, I know I love my dogs, and people say a dog is a man's best friend, but a wolf, who's a wolf's best friend? A wolf is another wolf's best friend. That's what I thought. They're, they're a pack animal. They live in groups. They, they don't belong in a household. They're, they're a wild animal. This zoo venture is amazing. Yeah! Llamas! Leopard! Pig! Cow! Sheep! Horse! 
Brent, this is a red panda? Correct. I always think of pandas as the big black and white bears. Giant pandas are. These are red pandas. Oh, those are giant pandas. These guys come from the mountains in the Himalayas. And they're a bamboo feeder also. These guys will eat thousands of bamboo leaves a day. And they love this weather. So this is the best time to come to the zoo and see them. Yeah. Snow leopards are one of the rarest big cats in the world. These guys are hunters in high elevations. That gray coat blends into the rock work that they hunt in. And they just love this snowy weather here. Do you know how to tell the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? Here's a helpful clue. Alligators have a wide, U-shaped, rounded snout, and crocodiles have longer, more pointed, V-shaped snouts. Drum roll, please! Welcome to the show. All right, my friends, I need everybody to open up their arms. And with a big mouth, go rah! I'm gonna count to three, and everybody's gonna say the word snap. Ready? Count. One, two, three. To do. The next thing you need to do is put your hands on your knees and say the word boom. Boom. Put your hands together and say the word chick. Chick. Just like this. Two, three, go. Boom. Chick, 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 boom. Chick, chick, boom. Chick, 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 boom. Chick, chick, say boom. Crocodiles are reptiles. 
These are animals that have dry, scaly skin and usually lay their eggs on land. Snakes, lizards, and turtles are reptiles too. Visiting the zoo in the winter is so fun, but after exploring in the cold, chilly air, I definitely need to warm up. Off to the reptile house. Here we are in the reptile house. And the first thing I notice, Brick, is that it's warm in here. Can you tell us about the reptiles we have here? This is, this is one of the other things that makes the zoo a fun place to go to in the winter. We've got a great place for you to come in and warm up. Reptiles are cold-blooded. They don't produce a body temperature, so we have to keep them warm. Go out, you walk around the zoo and it's cold, you come in here and warm up and get to see some really cool animals. That's for sure. Reptiles are snakes, lizards, turtles, and we also have some amphibians in here. So we have poison dart frogs. And our reptiles go from an 18-foot reticulated python wow. down to smaller reptiles. I noticed the largest exhibit in this room is the Komodo dragon right behind us. Just the name Komodo dragon gets me excited. Tell us about this beautiful creature you have here. Dragons have fascinated people for, or throughout history. They are found in Asian culture, they're found in European culture. Um, the Komodo dragons come from a series of islands off of Indonesia, and they're only found on those islands, which is what makes them so rare. Look at that tongue. So big. Yeah. They are one of the largest lizards in the world. They get to be 10 feet long, and they weigh 200 pounds. Wow. They're, they're a massive animal, and they're just fascinating. When I think of dragons, I think of fire-breathing creatures that fly down from the sky. Why do we think of dragons like that? Well, Komodo dragons don't fly, but they do have a red tongue. And some of the theory is that uh -huh. when they would flick that red tongue out there, that was where the fire-breathing legends came from. And so that's... That makes a lot of sense. All, all these legends have some sort of basis in, in something that people saw or heard at some point. Wow, the Komodo dragon is awesome. One of the other exhibits we have here is a reticulated python. She's almost 18 feet long and 135 wow. pounds. Wow. You're not going to find a snake that big in a pet store, huh? Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Why so dangerous? Well, she's a constrictor, and her teeth are a little bit over half an inch long, so when she attacks, she'll grab you, pull you in her coils, and then constrict. Wow. And, and constrict means? They, her, her body goes around you and stops your ribs from moving, which stops your lungs from moving. So they just you squeeze suffocate. away. Squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. Doesn't break bones, usually, but stops your lungs from moving. Wow. Scary, but cool. People either love snakes or they're terrified of them. Either way, they are fascinating creatures. Tell us a little bit about them. Yes, they are fascinating. I think that the people are afraid of snakes because they're so different than we are. They don't yeah. have arms and legs, they don't have eyelids, they don't have hair. So the legends of snakes staring you down, they don't have eyelids, they can't blink their eyes. Right. So that's different than we are. And anything that's different than we are is something that's a little bit strange or scary for us. Yeah, that's true. They don't have hands that they can use, so they have to swallow their food items whole. Reticulated pythons are also the longest species of snake in the world and have been reported up to 33 feet. Wow. So she's 18 feet, that's almost twice as big as she is right now. And the name reticulated comes from the pattern on the back. It's a web-like design, hmm. and it's good camouflage for her. 
She's an ambush predator. She sits and waits for a food item to come past, and then we'll reach out and grab it. She's not likely to chase something down. Right. Patience. So, Brent, most of the exhibits we've seen here have one kind of animal in one exhibit. But behind us, we have something special. We have many different species of animals all living together in harmony. Tell us about this exhibit and what we can find here. This is our Asian forest exhibit, and that's exactly what we're trying to show. Animals don't live by themselves. So in this exhibit, we have three different species of birds, two different species of turtle, and a lizard. And that's what you could find if you were in a forest in Asia. We have a pair of white-crested laughing thrushes. We have Ballymynus. Wait, say that again? White-crested laughing thrush. It's laughing thrush? Laughing thrush. Does that mean they laugh? They make a lot of noise. <laughs> sort of like a blue jay. That, that personality, that attitude. Got it. And we have crested wood partridges, and we have Ballymynus. Cool. And the Ballymynus are an endangered species. Huh. And now, is that a minor bird, the kind of bird that sings and talks back Same to family. Same different, family. Different species, though. Got it. These guys are all white with blue masks. Uh-huh. And then we have elongated tortoises and spiny hill turtles and a prehensile-tailed skink. fun and learn so much about the wonderful animals that live among us. Join us next time on Alex and the Kaleidoscope. somewhere and you learn something you've never learned before. Wow, there's a science center, a zoo. Do something you never thought imaginable. Come on, let's go. And now you can join me on the adventure.